and had that sort of the spongy bread, the injera. All very different types of bread. And I wonder, walking up and down Main Street, how many different types of bread we could encounter in a day walking up and down Main Street. So how do these different types of bread help us to understand the bread that brings eternal life. There we go, another one of those phrases, right? Eternal life. What does that mean? After I was here last Sunday, I drove up to Rochester. One of my friend's mothers had died, and they went to the funeral. And there were those wonderful, reassuring phrases about entering into eternal life. And that's comforting. And it is, it is good to know that, that Jesus will raise us up on the last day. And yet I wonder if even that, we're thinking about eternal life, a little bit off. Uh, it figures that I would lose 
lose my place here, so hopefully, so I'll just go from the lesson. So if you look at the gospel, what Jesus says is, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. This eternal life is something that we have. It's not something that we'll live into at some point after we die. We have eternal life right now, right here, on this little pot of brass on wings, on this beautiful summer day. And it makes me think, what is this eternal life that we are called to live into right now? And one of the phrases, another phrase that we have from the lesson that always jumps out at me is where Jesus talks about those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me. How often do any of you use the word abide these days? When I think of the word abide, I think of the movie The Big Lebowski, The Dude Abides. And it's a story about a guy who's kind of gone through some rough sort of stuff, but he abides. He kind of just gets by, and life is good. And so I think there's something important to think about abiding. And if we look at the word in the Gospel of John, the first place where the word abide is used is where John the Baptist talks about the Holy Spirit coming and abiding with Jesus. And then soon afterwards, Jesus is calling the disciples and they ask him where he lives and that word lives is the same word abide and then the disciples abide with jesus and then in the garden of gethsemane where jesus asks the disciples to stay with him to abide so how are we abiding? Abiding with God, abiding with one another. I recently watched a webinar with a famous restaurateur who pointed out that the word companionship actually comes from the Latin meaning with bread. Companionship is breaking bread with people. Companionship is what we do here. Companionship is breaking bread. And that bread that we break is not necessarily this same image of bread, of the white loaf of bread, but it is a wonderful, collection of very different types of bread, of white bread, of rye bread, of papadum, of injera, of very different types that we all break together. And perhaps, just perhaps, that gives us a little bit of a sense about what this eternal life we are called to right now, right here, in front of Trinity Church on Main Street in Middletown. I think of the great poem from Mary Oliver, A Summer's Day, because here we are on a summer's day. And Mary Oliver ends that poem off with, and what will you do with your one wonderful 
and I'll throw in the word from uh, our lesson today, your one wonderful eternal life. Let us <clears throat> in companionship, enjoying a wonderful diversity of breath and the wonder of God's creation. Amen. Amen.